afternoon, everyone. I hope my voice is clear enough because there's no microphone here. Um, we are happy to have you here at our Open Themes event in collaboration with uh, Sudan and South Sudan uh, Culture Week. Um, do you need me to speak up? Okay, I'll try my best. Um, I was expecting more non-Arabic speakers, that's why we have prepared this presentation in English. However, I think that everyone around speaks Arabic except for Frederick, so we're going to keep it in English, just for you, Frederick. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Open Themes Group, we are a group of Sudanese intellectuals and activists who, are, who focus our activities on the promotion of the values of democracy, secularism, and human rights in all its manifestations. Um, although most of our activities revolve around intellectual matters, we are aware of the interconnections between that and the political, social, and cultural spheres. We have been established in 2009, and we hold monthly talks and activities in venues around London. Um, today we're going to talk about a topic of enlightenment and uh, in, the issue of enlightenment in general brings with it concerns around its sustainability all over the world. But in a country like Sudan, these concerns are more rife and prominent. Um, decades of dictatorship and state hegemony driven by lust for power and utilizing an undeniably strong weapon, which is religion, has led to serious attempts at stultification of the society. They were successful to a large extent, but there are some pockets of light here and there that try to make themselves heard and try to stay. And this is what our guest for today is going to talk to us about. Um, enlightenment through a needle's eye and the issue of sustaining independent cultural activities in Sudan. Um, we are happy to have uh, Ibrahim Ejirefawi, who is a cultural and consultative director at MTFN, Creative Therapy Group in Germany. Um, Ibrahim graduated from the University of Juba in 2009 with a degree in, bio in environmental studies, and he worked in several cultural uh, projects in Khartoum. He has been the executive director of Al Junaid Cultural Center and a co-founder of Work Cultural Group. Uh, Ibrahim is also a filmmaker and a free content writer and currently he lives in Hanover, Germany. Before we start, um, I'll just take you through the program for um, this event. Uh, the talk or the presentation is going to take approximately 45 minutes after which we're going to take um, a 15 minute break and then we will come back for a one hour discussion. Um, a bit of housekeeping, um, the exits are clearly signed, um, the restrooms are down the stairs. Um, we would appreciate if you keep your mobile phones on silent and let's enjoy Ibrahim's presentation. Thank you Ibrahim. Uh, yeah, first of all, I would like to say sorry for my English. I'm not using this language tech for a long time. And yeah, I would like to say thanks to Open Team Group for the invitation and thanks to the seminar for the nice work. So, anyway, it's, not, it's like kind of visual presentation, not, so I will not talk like too much. And I'll be just reading from the slides. Long-term dictatorship, regional ethnic wars, political instability, Islamic public orders, police domination and rapid support forces chasing young people in the streets to share their dreadlocks by force, preventing barting and flogging girls because of their dress, and sowing terror and fear in capital Khartoum. Basic human rights violation, absence of freedom to express, economic collapse and inflation, all these words shape the general feature of the capital of Khartoum nowadays. In fact, 
such in such atmosphere, cultural work and accumulation actually became become like a, a common passing through the eye of the eye of the needle. Despite of Sudan's dark trusty, there are small scattered independent movements and initiatives that try to create spaces for cultural work through that needle's eye. Small scattered slides which I will try to cover here in this short visual presentation. Yeah, this is Jamaat Amal Sagafiat, World Culture Groups, one of the, one of these groups. It's a non-profit cultural group founded in March 2012 and registered in the Ministry of Culture in Sudan. The group works in culture and art sphere and organizes different cultural activities and events. The group is also interested in capacity building of creative and talented Sudanese artists from all generations in various fields of arts and culture through workshops, networking, and technical training. The group welcomes all kinds of creative projects related to culture and art. World Culture Group main activities are, are many, such as World Culture Forum, Useful West, Taking Advantage of Printing West, Film Screening workshops, painting, class, painting classes, school learning photography project using a certain millimeter film in disposable cameras, musical workshop and events and of Rouge, the book festival. So I will be, I will talk uh, a little bit more about the, this, about Mafrouche, because it's like, it's like quite well known. Uh, Mafrouche book fair, monthly event, for buying, selling, and exchange used book. It's organized by World Culture Group. The word Mufruj is Sudanese, means the used book market, which are laid in the ground. The book fair, books flea market, was one of the main cultural events in Khartoum, held on the first, on the first Tuesday of each month in Atine, cafe located in Old Town, in intersection of Al Qasr, Balas Street with the Jamhuria Street, it was a great hub for intellectuals, book lovers, and artists, and of course for seasonal book sellers. Yeah, this is the picture from, from the Frouche event. Yeah, it starts from 5 p.m. until 9, until 9 o'clock. Salute for books and libraries. World Culture Group launched an intensive cultural media campaign through its various projects, Mufrush and others, to highlight the miserable situation of books and libraries in Sudan. In March 2014, with participation of Goethe Institute, Khartoum, and other different cultural groups and initiatives, a three days festival under the title Salute for Books and Libraries was organized at the National Museum of Sudan. The the festival was a tribute to the role played by the old libraries in Khartoum, Marawi Bookshop, Sudan Bookshop, now it's closed, and the University of Khartoum Publishing House. This is the flyer for the invitation. The picture from the Those who lock the needle's eye. The authority demand a written permission to be issued from literary and intellectual works corporation, in addition to a sum of two million Sudanese pounds to be paid monthly. Also, another permission from the Minister of Culture of Khartoum State and said one from National Security and Intelligence Service and forced permission from public order police asking the organizer to prevent mixing between men and women in the book fair, which was rejected by workers group and that led to, to the permanent tease of, of roses. Not existing anymore. Then we have a group like uh, SFG, the Martin Films the Sudanese Film Group. The Sudanese Film Group was founded in April 1998. 
It's made of a group of individuals specialized in filmmaking, technical production, and distribu distribution. SFG membership open to individuals involved in filmmaking, artistic production, and communication development. The overall objective of the SFG is to enlighten people and enhance their ability to understand their problems. Most of the group activities focus on films and cinema in Sudan, such as hosting a weekly film screening and critical discussion at the House Sudan Cinema Club, in addition to projects like mobile cinema and film workshop. This is the House Blasmi. The group also organized African Film Days annually. The main problem facing the group is how to finance the film group and film activities. Lack of institutional funding and support in addition to the neglect by the government and the Ministry of Culture to, to the film industry and cinema in Sudan. Causes a deliberate absence of cinema in Sudan and widens the generation gap between the professional filmmakers and new self-learning digital filmmakers. This is the African Film Days timetable. Mm -hmm. The screenshot from the archive. Sudan Film Factory is also one of the initiatives there. Sudan Film Factory aims to qualify and building the capacity of young Sudanese talents producing films made in Sudan as well as exposing a Sudanese audience to films, filmmaking, and cinema through supporting the creation of Sudanese regional and international networks. A cultural exchange fosters the exchange of ideas, opinions, and the Sudan Film Factory has trained more than 100 participants on different tools and production phases of filmmaking, writing cinematography, editing, and directing of over more than 30 films from different genres were produced during the previous five years. Sudan Independent Film Festival, a week-long a week -long annual event of screening, discussion forums, and network, networking events focused on independent cinema as a form of artistic expression for social debate and change, organized by the Sudan Film Factory. In January 2014, the festival was launched as the first ever independent film festival in Sudan. It was attended by film critics, directors, and uh, producers from around the region. The festival has built a sole reputation in regional and international cultural film scenes and received intensive exposure through media coverage, quality of curated films, and commitment to the Sudanese and African film industry. This is Boston for one of the workshops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is Marquis of Jined Sarafi. The Jined Cultural Center, a cultural venue in the premises of Khartoum College of Applied Studies. The center has an art gallery, musical classes, and open air theater. The purpose of this center is to serve so, uh, knowledge and culture. It encourages the diversity of people and cultural, and cultural field, as well as being open to the culture of other countries. Their activities are varied and include cultural programs, a unit monthly forum, musical exhibitions, training workshops, screening, theater exhibition, and other arts related activities. The famous Suan Chowi. Graffiti and Sudanese graffiti writers. This is the, the, the project started in 2013 as an urban arts project at Gothe Institute, Sudan, and is now registered as an independent cultural institute for arts and culture. This is one of the best projects in Khartoum now. 
also for event like it's all about contemporary art and graffiti and organizing festival. They also have a <coughs> musical band for girls. Salute El Benut. It was created by Yalla Khatoum at the River Forum. It started as a book club in 2013 where seminars and intellectual lectures were presented. They were trying to register in, under the Ministry of Culture but received only refusal. Then they, they shifted their activities to Al Hatab Forum under Mr. Mutukil Ali, Hamadani, <coughs> defining them, them, themselves as a place for philosophical and cultural discussions. The activities include seminars, talks about history, philosophy, theory of evolution, relatively, relativity, psychological analysis, and capitalist economy. Also, music night are held, are held on Wednesdays, and new book signing events were held. Yeah. We have magazines, blogs, and digital media platforms. It's also like a, like a independent, self-organized things. There are weekly and monthly publicly magazines, digital and printed, created by youth such as Al Baid. Deal Jadid and Xir. Baid is an electronic magazine that started in 2014 with a special focus in creative writing, such as stories, poetry, and translation. Baid's main aim is to, is to provide a free platform without any censorship to the writers who are not only Sudanese but include participation from many other countries, such as South Sudan, Eritrea, Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, Mauritania, Jordan. Syria, Iraq, Yemen, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and so on. Right. Andrea is a bilingual digital cultural platform and, uh, and about Sudan and South Sudan. Andrea tips to be a pioneering uh, innovative multimedia platform for contemporary issue and mental through creating and creating cultural stories. This is the founder of the Andrea Bay. I just get a picture from the website. Mm -hmm. And it's here, we have to see it. Founded by Muhammad Sadiq Al Haq and Randa Mahju. And it is a printed magazine with its own website where a free writers and artists publish their writing and show their artwork. The cover, the first issue, the third issue, I Film Maktaba, in the library. A blog dedicated to the culture of book and readings. Run and edited by the cultural editor, Osama Abbas. Osama also runs Khartoum page for the used book on Facebook. Jil Jadid started as an intellectual newspaper in high school that grew up in Red Sea University since 2007. Later in 2012, it has transformed it into a weekly electronic magazine until finally it became a monthly one by the year 2016. The main goals of the magazine are to note a good readers through the various topics included in the magazine and to provide an opportunity for young writers who spare to develop their writing skills. Manchur, at the initiative of a number of cultural writers and editors living in Sudan, issue number zero was published in August 2016 with the support of German Culture Center of Gordon Institute. The publication aims to contribute to the revival of the cultural print media in which suffer from chronic shortage of publication and suspicion of magazine and cultural supplement in the newspapers as a result of the narrowing of the mar margin of freedoms after the end of the transitional period and independence of South Sudan, of Southern Sudan. Released, released one issue and it has 
it's it's top because of financial because of lack of funding and financial issues. I uh, just found this from Manchu uh, mm, from the archive. Al Hadasa. It's a non-profit Sudanese magazine interested in the history of modernity and post-modernity in Sudan, in in particular, in Sudan in particular. Al Hadasa is one of of readings for change project, which is uh, a democratic sort of project that has published many books dealing with topics about philosophy, theology, and politics, and um, com politic politics, conflict, and conflict resolution in Sudan and South Sudan. The activities are mainly focused in, on seminars and discussion. Yeah, now I'm coming to the end of the presentation, alhamdulillah. <laughs> How to sustain cultural activities in Sudan. Of course, any genuine cultural work requires a set of freedoms in the first place, such as the freedom of expression, freedom of research, writing, openness to the cultures of the world, good cultural policy, institutional funding, strategic planning and public relations, all these basic requirements for cultural work in Sudan needs a long cooperation from political and cultural effort at the local, regional, and international level. Yeah, and this is, I think this is my last slide. Yeah, I don't have like many suggestions. I, I just want to, uh, to talk to you later about how, how can we, yeah, how can we keep these activities, how to keep it, how to sustain it, to keep it live. Mm. Uh, I think we need more cultural management training. We need we we need more more cultural managers for for the cultural project uh, network and collaborative work training 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 and capacity building funding. Yeah, this is like the it's the issue funding for short and long term projects, regional and international participation, creating more space and platforms for, in Sudan. And yeah, audience development, PR, I mean, for, for the project or for the cultural, independent cultural work, PR and communication. Mm, yeah, thank you. I think, I think, in addition to everything you mentioned in the last slide, I believe we need a democracy, first of all, yeah. to, to make everything else possible. But we'll come to that later in our discussion. Thank you very much, Ibrahim. Um, uh, myself, uh, following this presentation, I, there were a few initiatives that I'm aware of. I have heard about them before, but most of them I haven't heard about them before. And uh, a lot of questions come to, uh, pop to my head regarding who their fans are, where do they take this, who attends them, how are they sustained, um, how are they even present um, in light of uh, everything that's happening in Sudan at the moment. But um, I believe we can leave that to the discussion. We're going to take about 15 minutes break. Um, I have a suggestion that um, for the discussion part, we switch to Arabic, just to make Ibrahim yeah. more comfortable. I think that Ibrahim is going to be able to talk to us a little bit and a little bit about the topic that we talk about in Arabic. So the next part of the discussion will be in Arabic. Sorry about that, Frederick. I can translate to you. Yeah? Um, let's take a 15 minutes break and then return back. Thank you.